1923. Representative Thielen. Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. I move to recommit Senate Bill 2609. I second the motion. Okay, members, is there any discussion on the motion to recommit? Yes, I have discussion, Thielen. please, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, what this bill is, it's relating to the financial disclosure statements that are available for the public to see when people are appointed to um, boards and commissions of the state. The reason it is necessary to recommit the bill, and that's what I'm speaking on now, is that Article 14 of our Constitution requires all boards and commission members who wield, wield significant discretionary or fiscal powers to file financial disclosure statements to promote transparency and accountability. It doesn't matter whether these board and commission members are non-paid non -paid volunteers, they still wield significant discretionary or fiscal powers. This bill that I'm asking to recommit, Senate Bill 2609, will require the redaction or the hiding of all financial interest amounts on the financial disclosure statements. So in other words, the public would be able to look at a meaningless document because the financial information would not be included on that. It would be hidden. There were a number of good government testifiers that oppose this bill, and they include League of Women Voters of Hawaii. They include the Hawaii chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists. They include Common Cause Hawaii. They include the Kapuna Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Hawaii Advocates for Consumer Rights and the Hawaii State Ethics Commission. The bill should be recommitted, Mr. Speaker, to allow the Judiciary Committee to have time to analyze the constitutional provision because I believe the measure as it stands is unconstitutional. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Further discussion? Representative Tupola. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to also share that the, there's 160 boards and commissions, but in this one- In support or opposition? Uh, um, in support of the recommittal. Okay, Thank please you. Please proceed. Um, just so that those uh, members know that it's not every single board and commission, but it's actually outlined in the bill which ones. And so the number one board and commission is actually the Agribusiness Development Corporation. The second one is the Board of Agriculture, State Ethics Commission, Hawaii Community Development Authority, Mr. HCDA. Speaker, point of order. Representative Bilotti. Um, debate on the motion uh, to recommit should be confined to the merits of the motion and not the substance of the bill being recommitted. Yes, please confine your remarks, Representative Tupola. Thank you. And so the point I'm making is that the recommittal, because this is including boards that I don't think everyone is aware of, I heard that some of the testimonies in labor saying that it's for all the boards and that, you know, this is why people don't want to join boards, which that, that wasn't the reason. And so definitely on the recommittal, it's to look at really the contents of this and make sure that we're not doing something that we don't totally understand how the effects are going to be had. Thank you. Representative Johansson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In opposition to the motion to recommit. Please proceed. Uh, well, I think this uh, body always brings up good points on the floor. What I will say is that the bill has a defective date, so all these uh, questions that people have still have time to be considered, including whether or not it's constitutional in the conference committee, thus not needing to be recommitted today. Thank you. Representative Thielen, second time. Representative Thielen, Thank second you. time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, a brief rebuttal to my colleague across the aisle. Conference committee is no place to examine whether or not a measure is constitutional. The proper place is to look at that in the Judiciary Committee. My colleague, our um, minority leader, brought up a very good point when she was cut short. It is relevant to list, list the entities, the boards and commissions that would be 
um, exempt from having these financial disclosures of their members because what it could do is stop government from functioning. The ADC may be somewhat minor, but rather secretive, uh, but the Board of um, you Mr. Take a Speaker, look at some point of the of others, order. such as the. Bilotti. Um, again, motion to recommit debate should be confined to the merits of, should not, should must be confined to the procedural debate and Ms. not the substance. Speaker, and I thank, I thank the, um, I thank the. Representative Thielen. Majority member. Could you please confine your remarks? I am. Thank you. I am. What I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, the need to recommit is very drastic because when you look at the HCDA, you look at uh, HFF, DC, you look at the Board of Land and Natural Resources, if their decisions are challenged because this measure is unconstitutional, we are going to create vast chaos within our government and in the public sector. We can't go ahead with a measure that is constitutionally infirm, and that's why recommittal is very appropriate at this point. Thank you. Representative. Nishimoto. Thank you. Just very briefly in opposition, Mr. Speaker, the previous speaker serves on the, on the Judiciary Committee and she never did raise a constitution, constitutional issue. Representative Ward. For the motion to recommit, Speaker, a couple of reasons, reasons. Are in support or opposition? In support. Please proceed. Judge Brandeis said that uh, sunlight is the best disinfectant. I think those were guiding words for, for all of us in what we do publicly, what we do administratively, et cetera. This is a season of unethical behavior in government, not only nationally but locally, Mr. Speaker. This is a- Representative Ward, please confine your remarks to the motion before us. It's a procedural motion uh, procedural to motion recommit. Procedural motion is saying we need more deliberation. We need to put more sunlight onto this bill before we go quickly to allow redacting. The irony, Mr. Speaker, is that the Ethics Commission itself will be exempt from this. Isn't that a great irony? And as my colleague indicated, the Ethics Commission is against this. They're the ones who the adjudicators of, if you will, are the referees of what's ethical. And they don't think this is ethical. So what we're doing by speeding this thing up and committing it to a vote is unethical. Redacting should not be allowed for the sake of openness of government and transparency of which all of us preach and all of us run for re-election on. Mr. Speaker, let us not be hypocritical. Let's recommit this bill, let it go back to be digested in its proper form and get this ethical cloud that's over the state of Hawaii away. It'll benefit all of us. For those reasons, Mr. Speaker, this is a very good recommittal motion. All right, members, can we take a voice vote on the motion to recommit? Mr. Speaker. Representative Lopresti. Stand in support of the recommittal. Please proceed. I was going to stand and speak in opposition to the bill, and I still plan to do that if we fail on the recommittal. Uh, I support in that recommittal because I don't think that this body should even consider this bill. Um, I'll reserve my remarks for what I suspect will be voting down of the recommittal and voting no on the bill itself. Okay, is there further discussion? If not, we'll take a voice vote on the motion to recommit. All those in favor of recommittal, say aye. aye. All opposed, say no. no. The motion to recommit fails. We're back on the underlying measure. Is there any discussion? Representative McDermott. Mr. Speaker, I stand in opposition to the measure. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, uh, financial disclosure statements are very broad and nebulous by nature. They include ranges of ownership and ranges of income denoted by alphabetical numbers um, for somewhat protection of the people filing. We all here in this body file financial disclosure forms. Um, I suggest you look at mine, you will not be impressed. <laughs> but we have uh, folks, there was a case of a, a well-known banker a few years ago who decided not to serve on the UH Regents Board because he didn't want to disclose his holdings. Well, everybody knew he was rich already. I mean, that wasn't the deal. He just didn't want to disclose his holdings. And a bank president has his fingers in many things, so maybe he felt uncomfortable. But there are plenty of good people in this community, in a state of 1.2 million folks, 
who would gladly serve, good, talented folks who will gladly display their assets and, and uh, wealth, because there's not that many of us that are that wealthy, Mr. Speaker. Most of us come to work every day, do the best we can, and try and put away a couple bucks. But this measure, I, I don't know why the, the majority would put this forth, Mr. Speaker. Uh, by the way, I did vote no in committee, and so did my colleague, Representative Thielen, just as a point of information. Uh, after studying it, we, we, we might want to ask more questions on the floor. And of course, conference committee, that's pointless at that, at that time. Uh, the, the disclosure forms are broad and nebulous. And so for the majority to put this forward, the same body that, as I recall, unless I have early onset of Alzheimer's, last year was asking for the president's tax returns, which is detailed information down to how much interest you got on municipal bonds. So I, I'm trying to reconcile the schizophrenia between asking for tax returns from some officials and then more locally where it actually impacts us on a daily basis people in powerful positions being exempt from disclosing what holdings they have. I mean, this is very real. Imagine someone on DLNR has land holdings that are adjacent to a, a development property and they're going to vote whether that development goes through, yes or no. We have no way of knowing if they have a personal interest in it. And Mr. Speaker, history is rife with people taking advantage of government and the system to personally benefit themselves. And so we would be well advised not to proceed with this measure because we are tempting people. We are, we are tempting them. We are saying don't disclose anything and you can vote on these measures, which you may have a personal interest in. Even if the fellow or gal is honest and votes up because they think it's a good idea and they have an interest next to it, we'll never know. So for those reasons, sir, I, I just think that this is inconsistent with the majority's mindset as a body and what they certainly put forward last year repeatedly regarding tax returns. If we're going to ask for someone's tax return on a national level and then we don't ask for local guys who actually impact us for their own financial disclosure, it makes no sense to me, sir. And for that reason, I'll be voting no. Representative Lopresti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and strong opposition. Please proceed. I'd first like to adopt the words of my colleague from Eva Beaches, if they're my own. So ordered. Don't have a heart attack. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I think this is a very serious uh, matter. There is a lack of confidence in government today across the nation and in Hawaii. There is the perception that we are a government of the rich, by the rich, and for the rich. This bill encourages that view because it will erode confidence in government. Mr. Speaker, I've had several of these wealthy folks in my office, as I know many of my colleagues have had. And I've been floored by the obtuse audacity that some of these people have declared that the reason we don't have smart people on boards and commissions is because we're not allowing wealthy people on them. And this false equivalency between wealth and intelligence, between wealth and ability, is offensive. It's also just plain wrong. Indeed, most spiritual traditions, most intellectual traditions, most philosophical traditions draw a very clear, sensible line and puts arguments against the idea that somehow seeking wealth is wise, that the truly wise actually avoid wealth. And instead, what we're going to do is encourage the hiding of wealth and encouraging opportunities for conflicts that the people will be ignorant of. That is the only purpose of this measure, and it is wrong. It's a shameful proposal, and I'm strongly opposed to it. Is there further discussion on this measure? Speaker. Representative Ward. In opposition. Please proceed. Speaker, in addition to adopting the remarks of the two gentlemen from Eva Beach, may I add a few words? Please proceed, so ordered. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the reality is that boards and commissions are appointed with political flavoring, political spin, political ingredients. They are appointed by either yourself or the president of the Senate or the governor. And 
there's usually a connectivity between that person and something political in who they are, what organization they represent. And my point, Mr. Speaker, is disclosures are intended and their very purpose is to diffuse the politicization of those things by being open and by having disclosure. Saying here, if there is some, if you're on a, uh, a particular board and you happen to have interest in something that's very conflicting with that particular board, the public should know. Mr. Speaker, I wrote a book on disclosure of, of politics for USAID. When the people of South America realized that their president was elected by drug money, they were aghast. But because of disclosure, not redacted financial, but actual physical evidence of where money came from. The point is, Mr. Speaker, this bill is inflaming the political process of appointments instead of diffusing it. And the whole purpose of disclosure is to diffuse, diffuse the politicalization of these things and to make it open for the public to see. Mr. Speaker, we have an obligation to be open with the public. And to do what we're doing here shows we got something to hide or somebody to protect or some agency that is up to something untoward because who they don't want to attract and who they may want to attract. It doesn't pass the smell test, Mr. Speaker. My colleague used the famous quote of Hamlet the other day, something is rotten in the state of Denmark, something is rotten in the state of this bill, and it should be rejected. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Bilotti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and strong support. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, when we look at the, um, the bill before us at House Draft 1, the only thing being redacted are the amounts reported. What continues to be reported by members, these non, um, to, by, excuse me, by these non-paid volunteers members who we are asking to serve the public, the source is, of the income is still reported, um, as well as a whole list of things um, identified in HRS, um, HRS 84-17F. So there is still much transparency. It's simply the amounts that are going to be redacted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Johansson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, in support. Please proceed. Uh, this is one of the many measures that I think the body has considered with respect to how do we attract uh, the most qualified people to serve in non-paid boards. And whether this is the perfect vehicle or not, I think the majority leader just made the most salient point, which is that uh, any conflict can still be diagnosed. It is still transparent. Uh, it's not obscuring that fact. So uh, there can still be investigation, there can still be transparency there. Uh, but I think it's important, especially in a small state, um, and it's not necessarily respect of your income, uh, but I do think some of the testimony we heard in the Labor and Judiciary Committees, uh, there are people who are sometimes discouraged inadvertently by what uh, we may have on the books um, from serving. And so I think this is part of a necessary and broader conversation of how do we ensure that our current laws uh, most enable the best qualified people to serve in the most transparent manner possible. So again, whether or not this is the perfect vehicle, it's part of a broader conversation that I think we need to ensure that our boards and commissions that are unpaid uh, are full of people who do want to serve, who have the necessary expertise to help uh, advise and or oversee again, while remaining transparent. Thank you. Representative San Buenaventura. Um, I'd like to declare a conflict. Please state your conflict. Um, my husband it serves as a volunteer with one of the, as a volunteer in, with one of the state boards. No conflict. Um, I'd like to have it to continue for the rest of the session, however yes, short it is. Yes, so Thank ordered. You. I, I also like to um, note my reservations. Thank so you. So ordered. Representative Thielen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now I can speak on the bill itself. Um, the majority leader brought up a point, basically, don't worry about it, only the amount is redacted or hidden. But just take a look at this. This bill covers the Public Utilities um, Commission. Representative, are you in support or opposition? Of this? Oh, I continue to be in opposition of the bill and in favor of Please the proceed. failed recommittal. Please proceed. So opposition of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It covers the powerful Public Utilities Commission members. So someone is appointed to that body and puts down one of their holdings happens to be Hawaiian Electric. 
It's meaningless if you don't have the alphabet letter showing what is the amount, the range of amount of those holdings. It's uh, the only good thing I can find about this bill is that it didn't originate in this body. It came out of the Senate, sponsored by the Ways and Means Chair. We didn't start this, he did. And then you take a look at it as it came out of Ways and Means and passed from the Senate. It's pretty dramatic that they had seven no's voting against this measure. And on top of that, they had three with reservations. So 10 out of the 25 on the Senate side were signaling this is a bad policy. It's a bad bill. And I think if you all take a look at the names, there's some very, um, I maybe need to say a conflict, a potential conflict, Mr. Speaker. Senator Laura Thielen, my daughter, was one of the Mr. no's. Mr. Speaker, point of order. Is that a conflict? Mr. Speaker, it's inappropriate to be speaking about the other chambers. It's also inappropriate to be speaking to the intent of- Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Wait, is this not a democracy and do we have First Amendment Ward. freedom of speech or not? Representative Ward. Mr. Speaker, Representative point of order. Ward. Could point we recess subject to call the chair? The House come to order. Members, we're still on SCR 1923. Representative Thielen. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to have a ruling on that potential conflict. Uh, uh, there's no conflict. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, Mr. Speaker, when, when we try to show that we are uh, being open with our government and that we're being responsive to our constituents and to the broad community out there. Um, I think that we need to take um, the high road. And I look at this bill as trying to go underground and saying, gee, we want to have these um, powerful members of these powerful Board of Land and Natural Resources, Public Utilities Commission, Land Use Commission, which makes major, major land use decisions on reclassifying land. And we want to be able to put these people on there, but hide, basically hide from the public what their value is of their different holdings. It's not a specific dollar figure. It's a broad range, as we all know, because we file those reports. This is such a step on the road to degradation, to bad government. I just can't believe our body accepting something like this that came over from the other chamber. It should have just sat and not had any movement on it. So I would ask members, I know what the reality is. I mean, there are, we're sort of outnumbered here, although we do have some, I want to appreciate that some colleagues from the other side of the aisle that are also opposing this, but I know there are overwhelming numbers that will be able to pass this through. It does not have to ever have a conference committee scheduled. And I would say that that at least would allow us to keep the dignity and the necessary open government that we should all be proud of. And I say again, the only good thing is this did not originate in this body. Thank you. Representative Tupola. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and a strong opposition. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, two things. One is that I don't think we've ever all seen any research studies showing us that there was a direct nexus between us not showing dollar amounts and all of a sudden people signing up to be on boards and commissions. There's other reasons, which one, some of the members of boards and commissions that I've talked to that live on neighbor islands that don't get reimbursed for that. Two, perhaps not even being appointed. Some of the vacancies were not even filled, not even asked, actually. Three, it could be anything from uh, 
the effectivity of the boards. So there's many reasons why there wouldn't be these, these uh, filled vacancies for boards that are voluntary. But we don't know for sure if by clearing out the number of how much they've, uh, they've given to other companies is actually going to make people just come by the hordes to come sign up for boards and commissions. And so I see that that's maybe the reason for some people, but it shouldn't be the underlying reason as to us believing that this is going to fill all the boards and commissions. And I did want to um, say that in committee, one of the testimonies that I heard even said that the CDC chair, you know, had stepped aside when she was found to have disclosed that she was putting money into tobacco settlements. And so what, what it is is that, yes, we want to see what people are, are contributing to, but the amounts do make a difference. And I want to read the boards so that everyone knows what boards these are. These are very big boards that make lots of decisions for our state. The Commission on Water Resource Management, the Public Utilities Commission, the Board of Directors at Hawaii Public Housing Authority, the Board of Directors of the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii Authority, the Natural Area Reserve Systems Commission, the Legacy Land Conservation Commission, the State Land Use Commission, BLNR, the Board of Directors of HHFDC, Hawaiian Homes Commission, the Hawaii Community Development Authority, State Ethics Commission, the Board of Agriculture, and the Board of Directors of the Agribusiness Development Corporation, so that people know that those are the boards that we're talking about. Thank you. Representative McDermott. I'll be brief, Mr. Speaker. I'm getting hungry. The, uh, we're in support? Opposition? Yeah, still in opposition, All right, sir. Please proceed. Uh, Sir, just a, just a thought. The, the majority party has always fought for the little guy. Is that what you're doing here? Thank you. Speaker. Representative Ward, second time. Second time in opposition, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed. Uh, speaking of the majority, I'm going to commend the majority leadership for giving the great leaky roof analogy. Hey, 90% of the roof is fixed. But you know, Mr. Speaker, if you fix 90% of the roof, you still got, it still leaks. This bill is leaking all over us. It's lowering the ethical standards that we have. It's lowering the bar. It's the common denominator that keeps us with moral authority in the eyes of the public. But this bill lowers us in the eyes of the public, Mr. Speaker. No good can come out of this bill. Bottom line, it's a bad bill. Thank you. Representative Lopresti, second. Still in opposition, second I'll time. be brief. Um, I just wanted to state, you know, some of you know, I recently had a health scare, and it helped to really clarify things for me that if I don't vote my conscience, I have no right being here. And I don't ask any of you to listen to me. I ask you to listen to your conscience and vote against this unethical bill. Thank you. Representative McKelvey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wasn't going to rise, and I'm in support because you're in support because this is you and I. We were the ones who did the underlying measure on this. Remember a few years ago when we took a bill that was supposed to disclose a salary range like other state employees for, I believe, just the PUC, and then we expanded it to everybody. And along the way, we made it detailed amounts. And so what happened was this bill came forward. I agree with my colleague from Kailua, perhaps the genesis of the bill is not one that makes me grow to love it. But at the same time, I think that having classifications that you can easily look up on the internet, that we all have to file, doesn't take away what we were trying to do, which was what is the source of the outside income? And does that source, that range of source, perhaps could that play into perhaps troubling decisions or issues that are in front of these boards and commissions. So, you know, because you see that there's a discussion still to go on, 2050, it's going to conference, and because I think what we were trying to do is still intact in the bill, I'm standing in support of it. So thank you. Representative Evans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise with reservations. Please proceed. Yeah, Speaker, I know that so many people in the community are really want transparency, and I believe that's why we passed this bill um, that was referred to by the previous speaker. But I do think hopefully as it moves through conference, maybe there is a way to find some compromise language and really come up with some way to determine what really we want in terms of transparency and, and accountability for people that I believe these boards and commissions, they make some major, major decisions that impact everybody's life in the state. So with reservations, thank you. Representative Matsumoto. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In opposition? Please proceed. Permission to insert written comment. So ordered. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Kuchola. I'll be voting with reservation. And uh, just like the representative from Maui, this is uh, the effective date still defective. So hopefully in conference, they'll fix it. And we'll decide later on what comes out in conference committee. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Representative Kobayashi. Uh, Mr. Speaker, with reservations, uh, sometimes one size does not fit all. Um, having uh, financial disclosure categories like above and below $1,000, above and below $5,000, above and below $10,000 may be insignificant, but at a certain point, I'm not sure when, maybe it's six digits, it does become significant. So maybe there could be disclosure, but perhaps in different categories or um, ranges. Thank you. Is there further discussion, members? If Representative Say. Mr. Speaker, with reservations. So ordered. Along with Romy. So ordered. Further discussion, members? If not, we're on 19.